Hey guys, this is Dale. You probably know me by Squishy. That's my gaming handle. Um, I wanted to explain a little bit about what I'm doing with the TV here. This is a 52-inch rear projection television. It's an RCA brand, and I got it off of Craigslist for $75. Basically, the reason I got it for $75 is it's got a problem that they call convergence, where basically the three colors that you normally see separate out so you can see them individually. Um, also, they they also refer to it as a bow tie effect where the bottom and the top of the screen kind of shrunk down. It, the picture looks all distorted. They didn't know what to do with it. It's a fairly common problem that happens with rear projection televisions, especially the larger ones. And so I just wanted to make a video to kind of show how I fixed it. I'll get into more detail as we get through the video. Thanks for watching. This is basically what the back of the TV looks like. Um, it uses Torx screws, and so if you know what a Torx bit is, it's a little star bit. You'll need a Torx bit to get the thing off, but you can get that at most hardware stores in a basic screwdriver set. Anyway, there's screws all over. Just keep taking them off until you can get the back piece off. That's what it looks like. Uh, the back panel that goes right here and also over the back of that has the model number to this particular TV. If you can zoom in real quick, it's right here. It's an R52. WH-74, that's the model of this particular TV RCA, and it's a 52 inch, um, and then this is the chassis number, the ITC-222A, and so that's what the particular TV that I'm working on. In particular, the board that we're going to be looking at is this tan one right here. Um, the, the components in question are a set of fuses right here. There's three of them, and they all look real similar, and I'm going to show you in a second. It's the middle one that's out. It's... Um, it's actually labeled right here on the board. I don't know if you can see it from back there, but it's FL231, and it points at the exact fuse that goes out. And there's a problem with these TVs that actually causes that fuse to go out. If you just replace the fuse, it'll probably go out again because you haven't fixed the actual problem that caused that fuse to pop. But I'm going to kind of show you uh, what's wrong with it. Basically, what I'm going to be using is a regular uh, multimeter. It measures voltage and stuff. It also measures continuity, and so you can tell when you have an open or closed circuit. Right now, it's open. If I touch them together, it beeps at me and it also tells me there's a short. I'm going to use that to test whether the fuses are okay or not because a fuse, there should be a good connection, so there should be a short. Okay. I'm looking at the back of the board right now. These are the fuses. These are the, the leads that connect the fuses. There's number one, number two, and number three. If you'll notice, I'm going to do a continuity test on them to see if there is a short between them. Okay, so that fuse is good. That one's not. And that one's good. So you can see that there was one fuse. They should have all given me a beep. And uh, all should be short across all three of those fuses. And they didn't. Also, the uh, part in question that we're looking at here is called the flyback. And it was a big plastic black piece that I don't have any idea what it does. But these are the solder points to it right here. In a second, I'll zoom way in. But the problem with these particular boards is they use lead-free solder. And the lead-free solder is more brittle and cracks more easily. And so the solder points on these things have cracked. And that, uh, that changes the amperage going through those fuses, and it actually blows the fuse. And that's the whole problem with the board right there. What I'm going to be doing is taking off some of that solder and putting and resoldering those points with leaded solder. And then I'm also going to be fixing that fuse, and that should fix the TV if I'm lucky. All right, so this is the back of the flyback right here. It's a little, uh, it's a little semicircle of uh, connectors and uh, their solder points. I really can't get uncomfortably close enough for you to actually see on this particular one, but if you look at the connector itself, you should be able to see a small ring in the middle of some of these solder points. It looks kinda like a bullseye and that's cracks in the solder. And I don't know if you can see any of that or not, but I'll get really close and let you at least take a attempt, make an attempt to see that. That's what I'm gonna be fixing. And then up here are the, uh, right there is the uh, fuse that's blown. And I'll be desoldering that and putting in a new fuse. I got the fuse off of eBay, and they'll actually uh, list it under as part number. But um, I got it off of eBay for $3 and then some for shipping. So that's the part. Um, I got a couple of them just in case this doesn't work. Okay, that's the fuse right there. I've taken it off. It's a 1400 milliamp fuse. Obviously, any 1400 milliamp fuse will work. However, if you want it to fit nice and pretty onto that board, that's where I took it off from right there, then uh, you'll get the 
exact 1400 milliamp fuse to go back in there. All right. Okay, I've got the uh, the new fuse soldered into place right here, and then I've got uh, I've taken some of the solder off of these solder points, that one included, and then uh, put some more with uh, lead. I'm actually using. Let me get the solder that I used. I used uh, 6236 two rosin core solder from uh, Radio Shack. It was probably way too expensive. Anyway. That's what I use to uh, redo the solder points on the board. I'm going to put it back in. In a second, I'll show you. It's a good idea. I took a picture just to make sure that I can get all the connectors back connected where they're supposed to go. I took a picture before I took it out so that I can uh, remember where they go. Another real quick tip is I put a piece of electrical tape to hold the fuse in while I soldered it in. You can see I've uh, got the, the new fuse in there. And uh, that'll keep it from falling out while you solder the other side of it. Okay, I think I've got everything plugged back in. Yeah. It's. I'll show you what I was looking at there. Is I've got my laptop picture there of what it looked like before I unplugged everything, so that I could make sure that the right wires go everywhere. I'm going to uh, put the back panel back on, plug it in, and see if it works. TV's coming on right now. I've got the back panel back on and everything seems to be working okay. You'll be able to verify it. Also, we've uh, done a couple of takes of this and I've and, uh, and so you may notice a little brown bar across the TV. We can't see that. It has to do with the, uh, it's probably the difference between the refresh rate on our camera and the refresh rate on the TV. So don't be alarmed. I can't even see the brown bar if you get one in the video. Let me bring up the menu to make, so you can verify that everything's working. Before I fixed the TV, none of this, you wouldn't have been able to see any of this. It would have been had a real weird 3D effect because the colors would have been all separated out. Pretty sharp on here. Seems to be working okay. Um, also, the top and the bottom of the TV would have been shrunken inward. And so, time will tell if I've really fixed the TV. It was a fuse that had gone out. If in a few days the same problem starts to develop, then that means I didn't get the entire problem that was with the TV and it blew that fuse again. I'll have to to uh, take it out, replace that same fuse, and then find another soldering point possibly, or maybe even a component like a capacitor that may have gone out. A TV repair shop will charge you $250 to $300 to do this particular repair. I did it with a $3 fuse, some uh, solder, and some soldering braid. That's probably worth about $10 bucks, uh, at Radio Shack if you get it there. And so, uh, and so $75 TV and another $15 in parts, that's not really that bad. I'm happy. Thanks for watching.